Hi, I'm Raquel Baldelamar, and welcome to the mega podcast, Balancing Health, Wealth, and Happiness, where I speak with high achievers on how they fulfill their professional dreams while maintaining balance throughout their lives. Today, my guest is a dear friend of mine, Kim Gordon, an artist and self-taught interior decorator and designer and founder of Kim Gordon Designs, specializing in creating majestic homes that soothe the senses, inspire the mind, and restore the body. She was born in Long Island, New York, and at the age of 18, moved to San Juan, Puerto Rico to study acupuncture and massage therapy. She found herself inspired by the design and natural patina of living spaces and met one of the biggest influences of her life, artist Millie Arango. From there, she moved to LA and started her artistic career, where she created shell cottages and elaborate shrines that were popular with celebrities and designers. In 2008, Eight, her whole life changed when her second son was born. Her marriage was ending, and so were the orders for decorative art. She was living in a converted garage and was fluffing up houses when she met Mauricio Suarez, her longtime romantic and business partner. She found herself connecting with people who were looking for homes to nest in, which led her to start her journey into interior design and home building. She founded her business, Kim Gordon Designs, in 2012, and without any formal training or background in architecture, she created what many say are some of the most beautiful homes in West Los Angeles today. God, (laughs) I want to know her. (laughs) You are her. In 2018, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and underwent intense chemotherapy and radiation for a year. The time she spent recovering from breast cancer transformed her life. As a cancer survivor, her mission now is to create homes that are not just aesthetic and functionally pleasing, but also put health and well-being at the forefront of the design process. The signature Kim Gordon style is an expansive indoor-outdoor home with big windows, natural light, and handcrafted finishes. She just recently broke a real estate record by selling her latest project, a Pacific Palisades compound, for $18 million which had an original asking price of 14 million. And between building a multi-million dollar business, she is a mother of two boys. Kim, welcome to the (laughs) Mega Podcast. Thank you so much, Raquel, you're so nice, so generous. Um, Kim, one of my life principles is that the doors of your future can be as unassuming as they are unexpected. Mm. Tell me, about that door in Puerto Rico that transformed you. Oh, interesting. Bringing back Puerto Rico. You know, I think that being from New York, especially then, um, late 80s, whatever that was, the um, I had gone to Puerto Rico so I could study. And I was on a rooftop. And I don't remember. I was just kind of looking at it all. And there was this incredible woman very heavy, two heavy women, actually. And they were dancing with these men and they were just, there was all that yummy juice. It was just, they were just dancing and having this amazing time. And I remember just looking at it, being so young, you know, and going, I don't know what this is, but I need this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was getting out of the intensity of the city or, or what exactly, or closed minded. And I was brought up in New Jersey as well. And and just thinking about getting into this so sexy land of Puerto Rico and the heat and the music and the food, it's just hot, hot, hot. And I was so used to wearing sneakers to go to work and just so uptight and, oh my God, it transformed me. And I ended up living downstairs from a woman that was so creative and her house was so crazy. I can't even begin to tell you. And when I remembered looking at it, going, oh my God, is that one a witch? What is wrong with that lady? And when I went upstairs and sat in her place, she was busy with something. I felt so alive or, or excited to be around, to be around X. Ex- it was very excess. It was very, it was full of excess and color. Mm-hmm. And I remembered sitting there just thinking, whoa, like it was just as if the food and the heat from the food is now on her walls and the sexy and the, all of this was around me. And I know that I changed at that second. It's funny you should mention it, but I mean, as the first question, I know I talk a lot, but I have to say that this was really a special time. Is that where like your grunge aesthetic developed? Mm, That's a really great way to look at it. 
because I became obs I had a camera and I loved photography and I ran around and back then Puerto Rico was like falling apart. Like the walls were mm -hmm. just naturally falling apart, but they're brightly colored. So you would have this real wabi-sabi of this kind of creepy stuff kind of growing and the house is becoming inhabited by plants and trees were growing. And I just ran around and took so many photographs and became completely obsessed with this, I guess you call it a grunge aesthetic, mm -hmm. but I would say it was more like, a, yeah, yeah, I mean, kind of like, um, is it organic? Is it natural? You know, it was very like that. Yeah. I've always also- That's interesting, yeah. I've Sorry. always also believed that like your mentors have, you know, can have such a great impact on your life. Mm -hmm. And you are blessed to have mm. Don Henley as a mentor. <laughs> I know, right? Tell me uh, about that experience. Oh how, my did, God. how did that encounter happen? Wow. I was doing faux finishing and I was doing, you know, that was back in the day where you'd sponge uh -huh. like Italian restaurants and stuff. And um, I got, I was working for some reason at the Capitol Records building for a man who did sound. Um, and I guess he was very well known in the business and we were talking, he wanted to do some coloring thing and he needed me to, I don't remember what it was, something like that. And then he said, do you antique wood? And you know, I'm, I work for myself. You never say no. I mean, you mm -hmm. work for yourself. You just always say yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, I, of course I, you know, yes, of course. He said, well, Bob Vila just left one of my clients. I guess Bob Vila was in Malibu at the time and was doing samples for someone he wouldn't tell me his name um, and that the client didn't like it and would I go look at it so he then told me who it was Don Henley and the Eagles and ignorantly I'm like yeah the Eagles which one is their songs which is ridiculous <laughs> because you know every word but for some reason I was disconnected he'd kill me if I if he heard me or he wouldn't but I listened to the I listened to their music and I realized what was wrong with the samples that the guy had done they were perfect so Bob Vila had it too perfect that he made things look old. He was antiquing. Remember mm -hmm. that crackle style? Remember mm -hmm. this back in the day? Mm -hmm. And the guy did it so over, over perfect that I looked at it and went, oh, my God, I can never do anything as good as this. But then I put on the Eagles. Now, I know you could laugh because everyone knows the so Eagles. So you're listening to Hotel California. Uh -huh, totally. In my studio. And somehow I'm just kind of in it and I'm just and I'm like, oh, I get it. It can't look perfect. He, he wants it to be jacked a little mm -hmm. bit. Like, you know, and I started chipping away at it and took some really big, really, really big moves on this. Like I was a little bit nervous and then I presented it and then um, Don came out and said, um, it was ridiculous. He just came out with his accent, his very Texas accent. Just, did you do this girl? Did someone else do this? And I said, no, I, I swear I did this. Little girl like you didn't do this. I go, I no, I did it. And ended up getting the job to do all of his wood in the house, which sounds weird, but he had a lot of woodworking and he needed mm -hmm. a lot of like just really gentle or mm -hmm. interesting just to kind of funky it up a little bit. Kind of recording studio slash studio for himself. And um, then I ended up doing his house in, in Texas and I would go on these meetings with these architects, like really high end, especially in Texas, in this really man mentality, super men mentality. And I would go in there and. I think half of them wondered what I was doing there. Like, is he banging this girl? Is he with this girl? Like, what is she doing here? But Don was like, you're the only person that would tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. And you're the one that's going to, you know, think for me when I'm not paying attention. Or he said something like this. And one time the architect and people were building some, they were talking to him about some cabinetry. And they said, um, so Don, they said, oh, yes, yeah, so we're going to have this. And I said, well, what are the shelves made out of? And they said, glass. I go, in his bathroom, he's going to have glass shelves? And he said, yes. And I'm like, he ain't going to like that. Because I instantly, knowing Don is very sensitive. He's a very, obviously he's an artist. And he is an extremely sensitive man. And the thought that he's going to have a glass of water in his bathroom and reach and place it on a glass shelf, I just was like, there's no mm -hmm. way he's going to like that sound. Even the sensitivity it takes. Wow, the sound. The it's sound. Is what he was going it like. would bug him out. Wow. And I, and. And then I'm thinking further than that, you know, when you're putting something down on glass, you have, a, there's a moment there where you come out of yourself and you think, am I being cautious? Am I using, can mm -hmm. I break something? And all of that energy thinking about putting something on that shelf, for instance, was lost because it's about being a glass shelf. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, can we make that stone or can we do something, you know, that kind of stuff. Like it, it seems like it's nothing, but this is where I started to get built, right? To your point about being self-taught. It was, and to call him someone who taught me a lot it's his sensitivity 
and his awareness of what he likes, if that's the right way to put it, to watch him in his own eyes. He is a feeler. And in the feeling of it is where I started to go, oh, like it has to feel good. And that glass mm -hmm. on top of glass doesn't feel right. There's a whole thing to it. And that is kind of how it started, I guess. And you're self-taught. I mean, I think that's what's incredible about your your homes is that no you know you didn't go to architecture school mm -hmm, that's right. design i mean I, this I, is... i'm only a high school i i, I left high, i mean i graduated from high school and i just wasn't a whether it's add now i guess they'd call it i'm not sure but something but, had me that schooling wasn't i couldn't i couldn't focus but it was something. i mean you still your education was through these in many ways these artists mm -hmm. oh yes you know the, millie arango mm -hmm. and don henley and these uh, i mean these artists that mm -hmm. you surrounded yourself you know, gave you just this incredible, like how to feel, how to, you know, get into space, how to feel a space. Yeah. It's interesting when you think about it, even the way you got here, I'm not sure where, where, how your story is, but I think paying attention while you're there, I didn't, right. I was young. I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh, Don's paying me and you know, whatever it was, but now I'm older, right. And looking back and I think all of these experiences, we should spend so much time blessing ourselves yeah. and bless and just trusting why is this happening to me because you're learning something amazing right now mm -hmm. you know a, a mat, all the mistakes or all of that is so important as we get you know thinking about it when you're creating someone's home you talk about how it's someone's nest and it's mm -hmm. such an intimate process People look at their home as a place to find balance, calmness, well as it's a soft landing pad. How do you create that sensation in interior design? Um, are you asking me in relation to me being a designer for a person or that when I'm doing the, like my houses? Let's say your houses. Because oh, I think I think your houses is when is when you have the creative process to yeah. do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And I do want to get into just the difference between working for a client versus but but I just there's something about your homes that have this extreme like it's just it's a feeling it's mm -hmm. it's almost indescribable but I mean I'm going to ask you something this seems a little off topic maybe but you know when you go into when you travel and you end up in a church or you end up in a museum yeah. and you get this feeling there's something like wow it's really you know it feels I think I don't know what that is Right. I don't know if any scientists or non-scientists magic. Put, magic. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Right. It's kind of a magic. Yeah. And or is it really the energy of the people that were creating the space? Like, is it the people that were making something? Um, and as they were making it, mm -hmm. they I, had... it's the energy. I mean, I really believe that people's energy, they, it stays in the home. Mm -hmm. Totally. And that's bringing us to Mauricio a little bit when he and I got together, I think, because our love, like uh, we were together and we we're falling in love and building these houses and there was so much like belief in each other and loving each other mm -hmm. that there was just a lot of that was imbued I think in the house it wasn't mm -hmm. I mean yes I guess he can always work with another designer and I could always work with another contractor but there is a certain like you say there's a certain little like mm, a little bit of magic or there is a lot of magic I guess and just mm -hmm being there and the house holds that right in a weird way like yeah. as we're in there and we're contemplating it like the house itself, it's, you know, starts to kind of mm, become maybe or something. You said in some of our previous talks how you like to meditate. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You sit, go into a house. I figured that's where we're trying to get yeah. me in. You She's get, trying to get me in there. You, get, you, you actually get into it. You sit in a house and meditate. Mm -hmm. And I remember you saying one house when you were meditating, it actually told you that it wanted to be like a Disney thing. Oh, yeah, girl. That was so wild. <laughs> Well, no, it's, it's, you know, you get to a house and it's true that I, I, you know what, it's kind of like a sports guy. So mm -hmm. when the sports guy is going to, I don't know, a runner say, and he does that visualization, mm -hmm. you know, he's put on his music and he's like, oh, and he could see himself running or running back is kind of pushing through and he really gets into it. That's kind of what I think I do on another level with the houses. So it's kind of like a creative visualization, mm -hmm. but I do listen. So I'm in the house, this particular house you're talking about. And it was pretty, when we first looked at it, it was covered in Disney stuff. Like I can't even begin to tell, really? like, we're talking the curtains, the wallpaper. She was a bit of a hoarder. There was like a whole situation where she obviously was in love with Cinderella. And there was just piles and piles of Disney, like 
like you cannot believe Disney. Disney threw up in this house. Really? <laughs> and I forgot about it because by the time you get the permits and you get the house, it's like a year later or whatever it was. And I wasn't even thinking about it. And I sat down and um, take my shoes off and I get kind of quiet and I'm in the house feeling it. And I'm like, all right, house, because I don't want to make the house mad or the mm-hmm. ancestors mad or anything, but I'm just listening to it. Like, okay, we're going to be working together. It's going to be some changes. So like, where do you want to start? It's kind of a fun little thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a little art. Mm-hmm. It's kind of part of my art. And the house in my head is like, I want to be a castle. And I was like, a castle? I'm in Venice. But when I heard it, I went, oh, my God, Castle, because it was from Disney. Mm. The house has been celebrating, right? The house has been celebrating this idea of Disney. I couldn't make peace with the Disney part. I had a lot of judgment. It's commercial. It's all the stuff that Disney is, right? And I'm just thinking, oh, God, like what? Mickey Mouse and oh, my God, you got to be kidding me. That music and uh, like I just had all this around it. And then I realized something, Raquel. It's the happiest place on earth. And I went, oh, my God, this house is the happiest place on earth. And I just, I sang a lot in there when I was working. I I spent a lot of time thinking about music. There's a lot of music in there. And long story short, the house was bought by um, some musicians. And they use it as a record, not kind of like a, a relaxed recording studio, as mm-hmm. well as a um, a meeting place for literally the top talent in our actually in our country. I I, think it's important to celebrate just the ancestors, the people, the previous owners who live there. That's exactly right. It really is like my, in my house, this artist, you know, who, you know, she had had the house before, before I bought it. It was all pink. Wow. All pink, pink, like literally like hot pink, everything, even like the backyard finishes was pink. Oh my! And it was like, she, and, and, and it was awful, but it was just like, there was just this, I mean, talk about this happiness. There was yes. just this, she was an artist and she was hippie and weird. And mm-hmm. and what I have done now is kind of, is just find how to celebrate. Like, yes, she took care of it. Like she, mm-hmm. she took care of it before I came Is she in. alive? Yeah. She's like, she's okay. off of Ventura. She's in That's Ventura great. right now. Wow. So I just think it's just like, it's really nice to think about how, you know, when you, when you're looking at a home, it's, it's like celebrating just the people who live there mm-hmm. and the history and you yeah. do that. You also really incorporate, I love how you incorporate sunlight mm. and like the ocean breezes, the local flora, all the nature mm-hmm. in, indoors. How do you work to achieve that balance between bringing nature and inside? How do you? I guess, well, you know, this was Venice when I first started and I couldn't believe that the houses had these little tiny windows, like little eyeballs, and mm-hmm. they were just looking out desperate. The idea to sort of integrate that, um, I guess in a way you're tripping me out a little bit where it's reminding me a little bit about San Juan where I was saying mm-hmm. that there's trees inside and they were growing out. Using that as like a little creative way to look at it. I think just you can't get enough really, well you can, but not having to be able to have this desire to walk outside of your house it's and so be greeted. powerful mm-hmm. i mean it's so healing like one of the things i have found i mean when i moved to la 11 years ago one of the things that i wanted to do is is incorporate just you know this the, the outdoor i mean this amazing weather so many yes. times a year I mean, incorporating mm-hmm. there's so much healing power to nature to the sun mm-hmm. and bringing that into your home was really important to me so yeah but you i like, just think yeah, and it's funny because this is all pre-COVID, mm-hmm. which the irony or whatever, not irony, but the luck or the such and such is after, during COVID, we're all just like, oh my God, my house. And then it just became, my house should be a place of healing. It should be, it's so funny because I, I use the word healing, but meaning getting home from the end, you don't have to be sick to be healed. You can fry, right? Because mm-hmm. you've been working too much. But if you're able to go home and disconnect in that time and honor the space yeah. and honor your own self and your self-care to go... Oh, I'm home. And the home is doing everything it can do to support you. With that means the ancestors, because you're asking mm-hmm. them, or the previous house, you're asking the walls, you guys, I need you guys, let's do this together. And I think it sort of vibrates and wakes up a little bit. The house like, oh, yeah. you mean you're talking to me? Oh, well, let me make everything work really well for you. Let me stand stronger. Let me be a little bit brighter. Let me show you some surprises. That's what, yeah. There is a real sensuality to your homes. You it think? has like this like, palpable visceral it's almost like an eroticism 
It's, you think so? Really, That's really I hot. find it. Yeah, in, in the first home, I think, and the, the, the first home on Millwood, I really, oh my God. I really felt that. Mm -hmm. And can you? Do you know where that comes from? I wonder, you know, does that take us back to my relationship with Mauricio in a way, right? I mean, like, but I think it's, is it more, is it that? Or well, I mean, I'm saying that it was, a, it was, that, that's the first thing I think, right? Because there's the romance and working together and the hope. But I do think that there was a certain coldness that I was viewing. Like, it's almost like you can either get a cute old fashioned, very cottage style mm -hmm. house, or you get the really modern right? Cement on the floor, wood on the ceiling, a certain math. And then there was bringing in some hips. There was like, yeah. I started troweling the floors, I st uh, walls. Then I had this thing about getting these metal windows, which I saw in Mexico and I couldn't find them out here. I couldn't, I, I did not, I, I went Mexico. Huge. It was so crazy. I think too, it was what we were talking about the other day mm -hmm. about the masculine yes. and the feminine. Mm -hmm. I think that, that like marrying those two archetypes, I think adds this incredibly powerful. I think feeling. you're right. I yeah. honestly do. And I, when I was looking at your homes, I, I was think I was like, it's you know, you have these steel windows, mm -hmm. you know, very sharp edges, mm -hmm. very high. I mean, kind of stark windows. I mean, there's you know, the the, the you know, there's some. It, it's the masculine, but then mm -hmm. you also have like the handcrafted finishes, the mm -hmm. incredible like textures and patinas. Yes. And, and this is, yeah. and you think about it, how it's, much did I curse myself back in the day for doing faux finishing? Oh, I'm just a painter. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just barely do this. I barely had any money. But think about how me touching those surfaces, yeah. hundreds of people's houses, and going from there to take that craft and knowing that a handmade thing feels more sensuous. Mm -hmm. And this was, again, this is before all these round things. So at the time, I didn't even realize, obviously, I just thought, I think I talked to you this about this once, is I felt like it's just one house. Like, I mean, maybe one person is going to actually like this. They're going to go, wow, this is another option. Like, I can mm -hmm. either have this or this, but this. But when people were walking through it, I kept noticing that men and women, oh, well, this is what I'm talking about. See, really this like is, it. and that's what you're getting into about the sensuality. Because mm -hmm. I, if you want to, you know, it's just how men and women can both find that they can make babies in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you know well, what I mean? mean? You want a home where you can make, make babies, babies in. in. Yes, <laughs> Basically, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what would you say is the difference between a resort and a residence? I mean, I know you well, and you I talk what? about travel and travel inspiring mm. us. It's a big, I mean, it inspires me tremendously. But me too. It's what do I you... think, is it that a resort is full of people, right? Mm. So one of the things that's so funny, whenever I go to a resort and I get into a spa and God forbid you have like bridesmaids in there or some horrendous mm -hmm. drunken, right? You get mm -hmm. to a spa and you're just You thinking, want the peace and calm. Yes. You and you got some drunken friends yeah, in there. Yeah. You have made this commitment to spend a lot of money and share the space, right? This beautiful space. And you're sharing it with, I don't know who, who everyone who's there that you've never met. That's nice for us for connection because you got, you know, if you can open yourself up to it. But I kind of sometimes selfishly just want to kind of be by myself. And in a way, the residence, if you're able to, and it's expensive, right? There's a lot of aspects to this. But if you can create like your bathroom to be a lot larger and your closet to feel like a room mm -hmm. and that you have something soft on your feet and you really put the energy into your home saying, how do I make this feel like a resort? And by the way, now you don't have a bunch of people. You can be naked walking around yeah. the house. You know, you could... You start to think, right. right? And yeah. I think that's just the difference. I think that's a good point. Like, I love being able to walk around my bathroom. When I wake up in the morning, I want to go downstairs in my bathrobe. Mm -hmm. And I, I do that. But some resorts, some people will look at me a little funny. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I've been so. to some resorts where they decide to keep their, their bathrobe on even through dinner. I just oh, got back from yeah. Miraval. I don't know what it, I was being like. I just kind of was like, really? oh, put on a dress. Like, <laughs> no, I, I want to be able to just I mean, have you're a like that. So, yes. okay. So, if you I, and I, I went love to, to go to Miraval. All right. So, if you go to, if we go to Miraval okay. together, I'm it dressing is... pretty good for dinner and you're going to wear a robe. <laughs> I would love that. I'll come downstairs in the morning in the bathroom. Basically, I'll, I'll, I'll work till like two o'clock in my bathrobe and then I'll finally change. Oh, that's awesome. That's how I like to do it. How many that's... times do you have to buy a bathrobe? I do have to get a bathrobe every once. I mean, I just bought a new one. But I bought this new like Ralph Lauren plush bathrobe. Did you? Great. Yes. Oh, that's great. I have like three different ones and they hang in my closet. I actually go, 
do I want the cool yeah. gauzy Sometimes light? Sometimes you want like a yeah. silk. Like I have uh -huh. like this red silk La Perla bathroom that I that do. I wear at night, you know. And then when I want to just feel sexy, I'll wear that. But then I have my you know Terry Clo bathrobe in the morning. So. Mm -hmm. Completely. So how is Miraval? Did, oh did, did you get inspired? Did you get inspired? Yeah, I really? got. I didn't just get inspired. I had like a trip out. Like I could work here. Like I, I had. That. I'm I'm going to Tulum on Friday. I'm oh gonna, my I'm gosh, be careful, couple, by I'm the way. Gonna, why is it just crazy? Tul Tulum got a little funky. Yeah, I have to say, I... we went in a couple of different places and then a girlfriend of mine was in Tulum and we were somewhere. Oh, I, would, I went to, um, oh, I'll tell you later, I forgot the name of it. But anyways, she, I mean, full on guns, full uh, on. Really? While she was there, really? they had wow. to go under the table. Okay, well, thank you for telling so me So I that. don't know what kind of place, I'm guessing. I'm Where staying, staying at a, a Hotel Bardo. Which okay, is a I nice hotel in, in Tulum. And then I'm going to um, uh, Mayakoba, Rosewood. Yes, Rosewood, I went to Mayakoba. Yes, I went is to the nice? Rose. I went, yeah, Mayakoba is the bomb. Really? Mayakoba is. <laughs> okay. So see, like, I, that's where I do but my best writing. But make sure you get writing. on a bicycle. Okay. I do the best everything. I do the best writing there, Kim. Like, that's, I'm working on my next book. And, like, I decided, okay, I'm going to really work on just, I need a, at least a couple hours a day. I want to Do you write. go with people? Or go by I'm yourself. bringing my business partner. I'm getting him a room, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, getting my own room. And you know, with the she's working just, vacation, she's just letting us know, ladies and gentlemen, that she is not banging her business. <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, she's he has, just letting he you know. He has his concubines. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's a he's a wonderful. He's 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 my work husband. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's the talk and going to like working with people who, you know, you, uh, like you work with your partner mm -hmm. yeah we work together we're going through a terrible spat not terrible but somehow after selling you you brought up you know selling an 18 million dollar house this was i don't know if it's a a, a a break we had to something was wrong like we were just on the stress of it really mm -hmm. these are two people i can speak for myself but i know that this relates to him as well just wanting to make things that are really beautiful and being so chill and lovely and then having the level of responsibility and the level of stress that was involved. And That's that brings hard. us into the cancer, right? Because it got to be where then we had so many people contacting us. I'm, I am not, I'm an artist so I, in a way, and I, I don't really understand the money part so much. And it puts a lot of pressure on me. Money is fascinating. I know you're talking a little bit about that. And I have to say that um, actually Don Henley told me something funny about money. What did he say? He said something. I remember exactly the time he said it. He said, you know, Kim, I can't do his draw because that's insulting. But he's like, you know, Kim, your life is going to change by a zero. And don't forget, it's only a zero. And I'm like, uh, a zero? Yeah. You have bills right now that are $100. One day your bills are going to be 1000 Mm-hmm. One day those bills become 10000 You might even have a bill one day, Kim, that's $100,000. But don't forget, it's just a zero. That's so interesting. I know. And I remember thinking yeah. at the time, I will never have a $1,000 bill. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. how could I ever, what would I ever buy? I remember thinking at the time, like, and even when we were discussing money with him about how I was going to get paid for my work, I was struggling with something. And he made a comment like, my money is not the same as your money to help me relax about it. And I remember mm. when he said that, I remember thinking, oh yeah, because he lives in a different realm of money. Mm. And I forget that a lot. And in my life now, of course, I have, you know, financial people, I have, you know, um, hard money lenders, I can deal with banks and it's all, all I know is if something feels good or not. So more in, money, more problems. Yeah, right. That's true. And I don't even, but the question is, is it more problems? I want to be able to figure out Right? right? What is the piece in it? it what is. is the, I mean, yeah, it's, I, this is, it's an, it's because money gives you opportunities. Mm -hmm. it, it solves, it solves problems. It gives you options, but it's, you know, it should not like be the one single thing that drives you. You know, there's mm -hmm. a great saying that says like money is a great servant, but a bad master. Ooh, nice. I like that. And I love that because it, to me, it means like, it's like, I think of, you know, there's many forms of wealth. Mm -hmm. I think of money as just like, okay, you have like, you know, wealth, you have money wealth, but there mm -hmm. are experiences wealth. You have wealth, location wealth. You have adventure wealth. You mm -hmm. have glamour wealth. You wow. have cultural wealth. You have mm -hmm. educational wealth. Mm -hmm. There's many other forms of wealth. And, and I think, especially as an artist, like you... I never saw you be dr driven by money. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. one of the interesting things I think about money, 
as you're talking about it is I never, I, I'm sure I'm only speaking for myself sitting at this chair, but I've never hunted for money. I never thought about it. I remembered when they told me how my did the first house, we did the first house and they showed the interest rate that they wanted it was so through the roof and crazy. And at the time, you know, a lot of people would say, no, why would you do it for that? And I'm like, well, I have never done it. Like they're mm -hmm. trusting me. It's kind of crazy. And it's probably going to make me more money than if I had a client. So, you know what I mean? Like real mm -hmm. money. And I thought, mm, if, I, if I just make enough that I'm doing okay, then that's all I care about. Mm -hmm. And that was how I, and I really just wanted to do it with Mauricio that we were just building this thing. And I was real excited to see kind of my shrines become life-size in a way. I was making my shrines at the time. And yeah, man, I think that then the money thing just came with it. And I never stopped and thought, there's no way that, especially in the beginning, that I stopped and thought, oh, I can make a lot of money with this. I just kind of wanted to be the artist in Venice. Did, did you ever get to a point where, like, you, like, you defaulted on a loan or some, like, something mm -hmm. happened where you're like, oh, my God, like, I could really, something could be really bad here. Mm -hmm. It's happened um, specifically with this house when I found out I had cancer. Wow. So when I found out about the cancer, well, two, a couple of things happened. One of them was that. Because of the way the house is situated, there was problems with the permits, which we did not anticipate. And that could have been a whole like, oh, whoa, like it stopped us for a minute. But that's where courage comes in, I think, and courageousness, where I, where it's like you kind of looked at it and went, I think it's OK. I mean, look at the, the big picture is this and then kind of get through it. it. Never actually stopped us. When the breast cancer happened, it was like not just the breast cancer, because you get breast cancer. Like, whoa, I had a bad one. And. And at the time, it wasn't just that. It's the energy that it takes to heal. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, looked at it much bigger. What am I doing wrong? What am I bringing into my body or whatever that has brought dis-ease on me, has brought this illness upon me in a way, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know if that's the right way to think. What did, like, how did it just happen? Like, did you just wake up one day and you, like, found a tumor? Yeah, no, kind face? of. I mean, he did, you know. Oh, he knows my breasts better than me. <laughs> Every man should. <laughs> Every man should do breast. a breast a breast exam. What, yeah, like, I don't think you have like, to worry once about a month. it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> For sure, he was, you know, and he just went, "Oh, that's weird. It feels like a little lump." And I was like, "Oh, that, oh yeah, really?" And you know, whatever. And then in the middle of the night, that same night, I remember waking up and touching it and going, "Honey, it has to be cancer." And he goes, "What? Why would it have to be cancer?" I go, "Well, what could it be?" It's a mm -hmm. lump in my breast. What else would it be? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that turned into that. And we had to really make a serious decision about about um, about the uh, work and about the house and where we're going to keep it. And yeah. so I wore this ice cap so I wouldn't tell anyone I was sick. We didn't tell anybody. And Really? You oh, didn't even oh, tell your children? Oh, I did kind of, but it was such a light thing. That's wow. a mistake. Having boys, I should have let them see a little bit more of my weakness in a way so they could feel empowered mm -hmm. or whatever to kind of help their mom to help a woman mm -hmm. that's something oops excuse me i that's something i've been thinking a lot about about going out in the world and men taking care not taking care of but just having em empathy and compassion and being a partner and being a i want to say powerful or accomplished ish or whatever i am um not strong courageous whatever the word is you have for me i don't have the right word but having that as a mom you know, and you're doing everything. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm cooking, I'm grabbing this, I'm, you know, going to the grocery store. It's quicker for me to do it myself. This kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. I paid a lot of attention while I was sick thinking about that. The Wonder Woman. Yeah, like the Wonder Woman the Wonder thing. Woman like, what are these boys going to look for, my sons? They're going to be looking for a woman that's going to do it all. I just realized if I had let them see me get a little sick, you know, if I had that opportunity. Um, I'm divorced, so with their dad, and so he would, I mean, I would just kind of, when I knew I was going to be sick, I would just make sure that dad had them so they didn't have to see me that way. Really? Rather yeah. than letting them see you. Yes, busy, exactly. You know, you didn't this want to was be a vulnerable. mistake a little bit. Really? Kind would of. Would you say that is like how you've changed since cancer? Mm -hmm. Is like you're, you're allowed, you would allow your kids to see you more vulnerable? Yeah. I think it's, and not just for myself, because mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, you're sick, you're laying in bed, you don't really need anything. It was the idea for them to be like, I can step up here, you know, like, it happens in the movies, you know, it just, I just didn't, I just dropped it. I just, again, took care of it and feel a little bad for them that they didn't have the same what opportunity. What has motherhood been like? In general? Yeah. Motherhood's hard, man. Motherhood, I don't know if it's hard. I have to say that as an artist, it's a decision. I meet people 
and you know, I'll say, oh, do you want kids? And they say, no. And I'm like, oh my God, that's awesome. And they go, wow, no one ever says that. Everyone's expecting you to have kids. It's such a personal thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if people really spend the time to realize that they are actually making children. You know, it's not just like it's this cute, it's almost like you're bringing a puppy home. Like it's not, it's really, it's, and it's a lifetime and it's transformative right. for yourself. Well, this is this big struggle that, you know, successful people who have responsibilities, who are doing great work, you know, fulfilling their professional mm -hmm. dreams. Mm -hmm. If you are, if you make the choice to be a mother, how do you also, you know, how are you not an absent mother? Mm -hmm. How are you a present mother? Right, exactly. And then how do you do it if you're lucky and you have a good partner, right. you know, and then the partner and you, you know, you're playing tennis, you know, it's back and forth, right. you know, I'm doing this, I'm the money maker right now, for instance, or I'm the whatever I'm doing, and then my partner's doing the other, you know, and that's probably, that's where it is. And then the kids get to grow up and watch that. Like, wow, you know, my part, my, a man or a woman, they were taking care of me while the other one, you know, my mother was off doing this. And, but I think talking about it more with the kids, I think we don't give them enough credit. Do you like, talk to them about, oh, I'm, how I'm am, I, am I a good now. mother to you? Yeah. I, really? I mean, my son, my one son said, I thought you were really mean during the time of the cancer really yeah and i wow. go really you think so but i was so crazy like they give you the worst drugs oh and it's all kinds of crazy drugs it's like crazy making i'd be up at like four in the morning clean the chandelier grinding my teeth i forgot that you know they would give you so much junk and just so it would have me so you're also exhausted but that first day or two you're like manic and then it just crashes and you get sick really? and i don't want to say that to anybody if they don't haven't gone through it I'm, it's everyone's personal experience but i just really got da, 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 like this from the medication so you became mean kind of mean oh. bitchy crazy i know hello and um yeah and that and that but i said but i never because if they knew i was sick and that was part of it if i was more responsible to my kids i'd say but you weren't really telling them about right i wasn't yeah. i didn't really think about it i didn't like, when i was going crazy by then i was not really crazy oh and that as a side note by the way when i started it i also it also pushed me into menopause something mm -hmm. called chemical induced menopause. I was every 28 mm -hmm. days before that. And it was like, boom. And you just, that so I was also too. like a crazy Going through person. menopause. Uh-huh. And an instant. Flashes, and not like, yes. And because it's like, you know, usually at menopause, it takes you a couple of years. You know, it takes a while. You kind of mm -hmm. spot a little bit and you're waiting. And, but this but was like immediately. immediately within the first month. You're like, bam. And then all of your hormones changed. Um, and I was just, I just wasn't myself. So instead of being more present for my kids maybe mm -hmm. to say to them by the way just so you know i'm going to be doing this this and this while i'm sick or whatever and it's like i did a little research and if it turns out i might be getting tired or my hair might bleh. but keeping my hair was important for them because i didn't want them to see me be bald even though i never thought about it before that that's great that you had an ice pack so the way oh, you were not go, the way yeah. you did not go bald with chemo was mm -hmm. you put an ice pack on your oh it's so you can't believe this wow that's amazing that you have you not heard of this I, I mean, you're the one who told me about oh, it. It's crazy. It's wow. the craziest thing. It's what, 32 degrees below zero. They put it on your head um, an hour or two before or during the chemo and five hours after. And the girl that you have to have do this um, changes it every 25 minutes. Wow. So, I mean, I don't know how many brain well, cells I must so... have lost. <laughs> but not no, great but hair. You have beautiful hair. You have gorgeous hair. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. When that happened and you went through cancer did you base stop and say i my life is not in balance like this is a message oh, yeah, from the universe sure. that my life is not in balance i am not doing things mm -hmm. maybe i have all this money i have this success mm -hmm. but there's this is you know is that did you go through that and and what evolved from from that realization without a doubt when i first had it it was a couple of things. One of them, Emilia Rango had cancer. She had breast cancer. Really? Then it turned into a brain cancer. Really? And it turned out that she had the type of cancer. It's called triple negative breast cancer. Now, triple negative breast cancer mainly affects um, black women and Latin women and some Asian women. And I have no, I, it turns out I'm 100% European, which is really a disappointment. <laughs> I was pretty horrified. But anyway, um, it, anyway, yeah. So I had triple negative breast cancer as well. Um, when I heard that, it stopped me dead in my tracks. I was like, wait, what did you say? Triple negative breast cancer. The same as your Yes. Mentor. And I was like, how is this possible? She's a Latina. She was like an Afro-Latina. And um, she had this breast cancer 
that she should, you know, is hereditary or whatever. And I just stood there going, oh, uh oh. And I remember thinking, like, I trust that the world is crazy and I don't know enough about it. And I remember just stopping dead in my tracks and kind of laughing like, oh, shit, this is going to be a, this is going to be a trip. Like, you know, like it was something like that happened to me. And I guess it did. I mean, there, I didn't anticipate any of it. Like I knew like, I'm going to beat that. I didn't even really have that. I just kind of went, I just went and did it. Mm. I was always afraid of medicine, always disliked doctors. As soon as I heard I had breast cancer, I called Brazil, Israel, Germany, looking for whatever treatments and would contact the top people. And they would read my file and go, yeah, you got to do chemo. If it comes back or you got to do chemo. Nobody wanted me. It was obvious I had to do the bad route. Do you think you were like focused on your own self-care before cancer? No. Yeah. I never thought about myself. Really? And what mm. about after? Do you think you... Yeah. Now it's like, although I've fallen off a little bit from some stresses and I'm heavy now, but I think it's the COVID and age. I don't know what's going on, but I just... Yeah. We can talk about aging too. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I don't know what. I just... <sighs> so funny. I had a photo shoot the other day and he sent me the pictures and I was like, oh my God, I haven't even looked in a mirror. <laughs> so it's had a heart attack, but um, whatever. Um. Yeah, I mean, now I'm thinking, obviously, I'm thinking more about self-care and and also a lot about my kids, not just just boys. Mm -hmm. I have two boys and I just think, like, what are boys learning? Like, what's going on in the world? Mm -hmm. I'm sure if I had girls, it would it would also throw me be off. Be different problems. Yeah, definitely. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> There'd be like, Mom, I'm 15 years <laughs> old and here's my 22 year old boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That totally. was me. <laughs> was it? Wow. I had, yeah, that kind of drove my mind. I was, I was, I had this fake ID at 17 years old, uh -huh. going to these nightclubs, being, oh my I was God. a wild And you're girl. so hot. That must have been just oh, trouble. My, my, I, I was trouble for my I mom. Can't... I was a straight A student. Oh, that's But good. I was, I was trouble. So. I bet. <laughs> um, going to relationships. Mm -hmm. You, you've had this long-term relationship with Mauricio and, um, what has it been like to just work with him? And how do you like maintain the boundaries between the work and the home life? I think we, we messed up, he and I, actually. I don't think we, I think all the stress of it and then the cancer and then all the pushing through and trying to get something mm -hmm. finished and the way he's trying to do it and he's trying to keep his own sense of self, you know, a man who's, you know, a construction guy, he's from Mexico City, he brings all of his own stuff into it. And then for me, a woman who's quick, fast, 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 you know, where he's very earthy and very, you know, uh, he's like in it. And then I'm just, oh, my God, but you know, just mm -hmm. spinning around. It's like Lucy and Ricky. <laughs> <Before we go. laughs> it's just about that. And um, I don't know if it's we lost our individuation or if we lost our sense of, uh, our, you know, for instance, our sense of self. Mm -hmm. It's just I got. I don't know what happened. I have to say that we messed up. I have, maybe since the cancer, in a way. Actually, I think it's a good analogy. It's like we're going through a healing process right now that I can't change, I can't fix. I want to know, am I going to know that he and I will be together forever? Am I going to, he's going to, we're both going to figure it out? I don't actually know. And what's interesting for me, since, and it, to your point about cancer or, or whatever happened as a change, I don't actually have, any energy in the outcome. I'm actually so paying attention more to what it looks like right yeah, now. You're not focused on this is what's going to happen. This mm -hmm. is what we're going to do. You're yeah. just like in your... Like, are we together? Are we not together? What are we doing? It's like, yeah. we need a break right now. We've been, we haven't been kind to each other. Mm -hmm. We haven't been really loving and supporting each other. We did this huge house, which we should be just all over each other. Like, oh, holy shit, we did this. How, is there anything you guys did that like you did that created your own time together like is there anything you would do with him to focus on oh your i know where you're going with this <laughs> <laughs> okay all right what we're kelp is leading us towards <laughs> is the fact that um mauricio and i for many years many years i gotta tell you a long time we always had a four o'clock sex appointment and we never broke it and i'm telling you this is if i tell you it's every day it was basically every day or it was every it was every day. It was all the time. And it was always at four o'clock. And there were times we had people in the house or working or doing stuff like that. And it was it was like a dead on. We have to do this. And it was never forced. It never felt like I don't know how it happened. It just 
We noticed that sex felt better at four in the afternoon. I've done much thinking about this because the morning is too early. You feel too, you feel too this, <laughs> yeah. right? Nighttime, you're probably just too tired and mm -hmm. drunk or ate too much dinner or whatever you're doing at night. And then the kids, of course, are going to be somewhere. But at four o'clock, it's right before they come in. So it's a nice little break. So you kind of jump into bed, have some fantastic sex, and then you can take off and pick the kids up from school and make dinner and you're whistling while you work. Da, da, I love da, that. Da, 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 I swear to God, it was. I love that. You know, you're probably. I mean, maybe we should just get back to that. Maybe that's that would just make everything better. I, I, I think that, that is. That it, that and we is didn't so do that. Like, beautiful. I mean, that even it sounds so regimented. It, it really also, wasn't. I it, mean, it, yeah. And you know what? By the way, about regimented, I have to say, I have got such a busy schedule now. And it, and yes, there is these big things on my schedule. Tick, 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 tick. All this stuff goes down. And it's, you're trying to get it done. And there's very little room in there for change. But then you start thinking about it. Like, is it so bad to slip my husband in there? Like to oh, slip my man course. in there? It's, I mean, is it it's, that bad? And I it mean, also, it's what makes us complete women. You know, we're not uh -huh. just like, it just makes us what complete women. You're the one who taught me, Kim. Oh my that God, what? At the end of a long work day, mm -hmm. all I want to do is go home and suck a big dick. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> right? You're the one who taught me that. And I uh, realized, like, you know what? When you're trying, when you're building businesses, when you are just, uh -huh. you know, leading right. people, being powerful, being the one in control, mm -hmm. and being, and, and just having this incredible responsibility, you just, like, it's it's having a nice way of just, like, showing another side of yourself with your partner mm -hmm. is, 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 is such a And, you know, that's actually interesting because in work, where we work together, mm -hmm. he is the masculine theoretic, mm -hmm. right he's the contractor he's this when it comes down to the face of the company and having to go to the investors and to, and to really negotiate and to get out there that's me so people could say well you know Mauricio you know well he's Mr. Gordon so to speak mm -hmm. right like there's a little bit of that that could come at play but I just I'm like no no you got to bend me over like or whatever like mm -hmm. I literally yes. can't it's like you have yes. to he has to own it and that is he has to own it. And he that, has to just, yeah. I just think And that, I don't give it to him as a present. I want that. Yes, like, I'm not just yes. being, I'm not bending over because I'm like. See, I think that is part of balance. Like, I yeah. think as a, do be a complete woman, mm -hmm. you know, and I think you and I are very similar in that way is that we, like, we can be very, out. we're strong, very strong alpha yeah. women mm -hmm. when we need to be. But yeah. it's also like. It, there is another element where we enjoy being the more maternal, the submissive, mm -hmm. which is like we don't we we want a very strong, powerful mm -hmm. alpha and male. Part of, and it's part of also, at, and to your point about balance in, in my life with Mauricio, it's like we needed that. Like in, mm -hmm. in a, And I was just like, oh, my God, take me. I'm just so tired of mm -hmm. thinking and making another decision. And one more person asking me a question or even the kids and what are we going to have dinner? Fuck dinner. Yeah. Lunch. Oh, my God. Making another goddamn lunch. But the thing about food and when are you going to cook it and what are you going to do and what kind of it's just too much work i just want i just want to be just taken care of and it's yes. what is what is it yeah. an hour like or half an hour like what is that time that time is just oh god get this freaking orgasm out of me so i can I get that. on and go for the rest of the day and sleep better and then and then i think he's kind of like she needs me yeah. like in a way yeah, right that's he's beautiful right i think he lays there thinking or lays there whatever afterwards and he'll think that's so romantic she and so me. beautiful. Mm, and I hope you. more couples across America can make four <laughs> long sex appointments. And who knows? Maybe that's... It might that's, have to be three. It's hard. Three. I mean, how can people do this? It's and hard. I would tell them that all the time. I was always saying, this is why we work for ourselves. We work mm -hmm. for ourselves so we can get a little beach house, you know, somewhere else and do a little bit of work from there and then just hang out in the sun. Like, mm -hmm. there's no reason that we can't have more balance. And this is something I battle. He doesn't have that. He is... He's going through something. I'm not sure, but it was something that was a little bit darker. I'm not entirely sure where Mauricio is, but he's got a little spot. And um, I can't get him out of it. Like, I can't help him. And I think the best thing in the world is we're taking a break right now for both of us. Like, I'm really uh, hanging out with some more girlfriends of mine and doing lots of little trips and just really happy. And I'm surprised at my lack of, I'm really surprised by my lack of wanting to control it and want to be like, Let's go to therapist and fix this yeah. right now. It's almost like the breath is needed. The space. Yeah. I mean, I think mm -hmm. I, I do know who Esther Perel is. Of course. Oh, yeah. I love Esther Perel. I know you do. She's and just she's, a, honestly. You know, one of the things she talks about is that you, there's a paradox between desire and love, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how, you know, you can't have, like, he's not yours. Right. 
he, mm-hmm. like, he has his own identity and mm-hmm. he has his own self and mm-hmm. you know and and when you can actually you know what creates desire is is the individuality of who mm-hmm. he is but also the element of giving someone space mm-hmm. and letting them just work through yeah what they and giving you space and mm-hmm. then Hopefully, you know, if, if it, you know, when you come back, you you can actually see each other. I want to, yeah, I'm that, girl, that is exactly it. And I didn't realize how I was climbing on top. I was trying to fix it. I'm so afraid to lose him. I'm so afraid to lose that. I Something happened. I was super, I have, you know, you start to learn more about your roots and my family. And I have a whole codependent Irish Catholic, you know, alcoholism, mm-hmm. parents, you know, father. And just, you know, the, the, that sort of baggage i guess so that kind of learning and that uh, as i'm working through that is why i'm thinking more about my own kids what are they learning now like i know what i learned from my parents mm-hmm. and it's not what great are they learning from you what are they learning from me what are they learning from their dad what are they learning from mauricio mm-hmm. like what mm-hmm. you know what is happening here how do i how can i be better service also to them you are know. you going to therapy? Yeah, totally. That's I have great. A, I've got a hardcore guy. That's so good. I think that's so important. Oh my God. I have never had having... a guy therapist. Really? I think I did when I was like super young. I've had met both men and women and they're, I mean, different, but I mean, I think both are good. Yeah. But I, I think it's I have really somebody important. who's just like, because I have boys and, and Miles mm. was having a little bit of difficulty at Michigan uh, when he went to school, just little things, social stuff or whatever, you know, it's your mm-hmm. first year in college and he's... um suffering a little bit and I, I hunted and found this guy and he really started helping miles and then dax was having a couple little things and then he started seeing dax and then i was watching him and i would come in to talk to him for a few minutes and i'm like you know i'd like to see if you and i can work together and it was kind of hardcore because he's like uh, he writes books about men his name is stephen poulter he writes mm-hmm. books about um men and relationships and boys and he's got this fantastic book that i think he's working on right now and um oh my god i've learned so much oh yeah I, I'm a huge believer in it. Are you really? Yeah, my mother's a psychotherapist. She's a Jungian psychotherapist. Oh my god, I love. It. And I just think, you know, understanding, you know, one of the biggest things I look at, you know, Carl Carl Jung, Jung. because he, mm-hmm. he he works in archetypes. Mm-hmm. And when you can kind of understand archetypes and understand like the archetypes that have influenced you, and mm-hmm. then what are the archetypes that you have? Right. I find those fascinating. Yeah, me too. I think that's really. Oh my god, that's exactly what is here in front of us a lot yeah and you what, and it's a little mysterious you know these archetypes and all this so it's, you and i start getting back to ancestors yes, you start getting back to yes. storytelling you start getting back into all of this all of those guys yeah and that's and that's kind of i think what we bring in so into. much of it is subconscious like yeah. so much of like what we do is subconscious but then i think that therapy helps connect the subconscious mm-hmm. and the conscious like for me it's meditation especially. i was just gonna say yeah. i was just gonna say it's, it's, it's meditation. meditation like mm-hmm. it's it's i think so much of what we do is subconscious but then when we meditate and we can actually have the space to just mm-hmm. feel it and that you know you talk about how like, integration integra- yeah you're like mm-hmm. how space like i remember in you know one of the things you talk talk about is just how a space makes you feel mm-hmm. but you have to like allow that to sink in and yes. kind of connect with it. And mm-hmm. you need them to meditate in that. Right. And that's bringing up when we talked originally about when you asked me, what do I do to the houses? And I said, well, is it the houses that I do for myself or houses for clients? Mm. There is a psychological aspect that I've been exploring more with clients in, in my mind and a little bit of my meditation and asking myself, how do I want to move forward with my work and my business? You know, And I think a lot about like, how do you want to use your space? People come and they say, I just bought this house. We're moving in in two weeks. We need to get finished. And, and they do this. And I'm like, you have to live in the house, do the bare minimum and live in there. Like live in there for like, you only have to live here for two weeks before you're going to know. Then call me. Because once you lived in there, you, know. you really start going, oh my God, I totally thought I would use that door. But it turns out I'm always going through the garage. And then the garage doesn't have a place to put your stuff down. And then you start to build. Or I pull, I never park in the driveway. It turns out I always go in the garage or some crazy thing. I can't walk the dog because then the door is this. And then you you can shift the house and create the space when someone's lived there. Mm-hmm. And that comes from just organic living. Since COVID hit, so many people are now having to use their homes mm-hmm. as a way to work. When mm-hmm. the home was yeah. the respite, the, the home was the place mm-hmm. where people go you know, away, you know, to, to get away yeah. from work. Mm-hmm. How do you now look at a home and how do you you know, 
create boundaries? How, yeah, how would you recommend people create boundaries in their home when now that the work life and the home life yeah, are the same? Totally. I mean, I think it's going to bring back the dining room. You know, we've had these open floor plans mm. and now you're like hiding in a closet so that you can keep away from someone else where you're trying to have a Zoom call. So if you can have the dining room that can close off, remember, you know, these are old 50s. We would yeah. get into these houses and the kitchen was closed off and put those swing saloon yeah. doors and that would have like a pantry that was over there that was on another door. And then you go, I'm not sure if doors aren't the answer where we've just had these huge open floor plans so and that's still separation work. like yeah a, a, like yeah. a boundary so yeah. using an actual door as a boundary yeah or at least the walls like now when i i'm doing a house right now in um man um up mandeville and uh -huh. i was looking at the kitchen and usually it's wide open and then i was looking at it going i don't wanna like i kind of kept the kitchen separate and i'm really and then the the dining room is in a certain special way and it kind of feels sort of fantastic now i have to the height of the ceilings is giving us the feeling of openness the, mm -hmm. the view and the big windows so it's still it, in this particular space it really works that you're able to delineate these spaces with a door or maybe not i haven't decided about the door or not for people who may not be able to afford you, yeah Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what would you how would you guide people on how okay they can create a separation you mean instead of just putting a door up yeah I mean, I think it's number one, it's time. I mean, now, number one, pray God that COVID is behind us ish or it's on its way. Mm -hmm. It's on its last but legs. But it's actually, in many ways, like working from home is becoming yeah. so common. I mean, how much, as a boss, I mean, yeah. as a boss lady, I mean, I like it that people can Me work too. at home. A lot of my employees, like I, you know, I got uh -huh. rid of my office. Yeah. I mean, look I, at that. I had an office in downtown uh, Santa Monica and it just didn't make sense to keep yeah. it anymore. No. So uh working from home is kind of going, I, I think it's COVID had basically. Mm hmm. Like it shook it out. It shook it out. And mm -hmm. more people are now, it's just, it's kind of the way of life. But the problem now with that, especially if you have family and kids, it's that mm -hmm. now it's that your home isn't just the home. It is now like your office. And how mm -hmm. do you, how do you manage that? It's, it's definitely a balance. I mean, you really have to be creative and look at your house. Sometimes it's fun to have friends over and keep an open mind and say, I really need a space i figured out that's six by four whatever it is and then have friends come over because sometimes you don't see it and they might say oh my gosh why don't you do on the side of the bedroom or something like this mm -hmm. of course you know i'm going to say try not to work in your bedroom because yes. you used to be working yes. on other things of course you know <laughs> i definitely think the bedrooms are like I know. sleeping dressing and sex yeah totally that's it i know i'm and i and just that's a, it's a sanctuary and, and by the way bedrooms don't have to be that big the closet has to get bigger right the closet yeah. and the bathroom should get bigger the bedroom should be a bed and like a mm -hmm. chair yeah. Maybe a little, uh, I have the thing about bistro tables. So I can get up, I can do anything I want with a bistro table. You know, get a little champagne on there, have little flowers. I could have like, I can get my computer, my mm -hmm. laptop, get a little thing done, you know, just yeah, in the corner. Need, you but you don't need you these don't big need bedrooms. No bed. one is in the bedroom. I mean, yeah. you're doing it for sexy fun time and you're sleeping Yeah. and that's it. And the disaster should be over there in the closet where you can actually get dressed, see your clothing and see mm -hmm. your body in a mirror. And then the bathroom should be the size of a house. Well, these little homes, like my my little beach cottage in Santa Monica, like there are no closet space. Like that's right. You know, that's one of the things that I you know have to mm -hmm. figure out. Like when you walk into my bedroom, like you first thing you see is my shoe rack because there wow. are no places. Oh, how cute for my shoes. Oh, that's <laughs> so. Sucks. But this is, uh, you know, I will. I'll get to a place where I'll afford one of your homes. I'm one day. <laughs> you know, and then it'll be like, can I'm, get me a big closet, big closet. small I'm bedroom, big you, closet for small, all my shoes. Oh, just a normal bedroom <laughs> that you could walk around and have a little bit of space, but yeah, not enough to like that you need to have a dress. You shouldn't have a dresser. I just don't. You could, I guess, but I don't really have that. I have that all over there somewhere. Oh, so you don't even have dressers. I don't want a dresser in the bedroom. I kind of just like it to be a pretty room. Like it's That's a night, very you know, I don't want to see a desk in there. I just, yeah. something lovely that just looks like I can rest in here. I don't have to think about the messy, you know, underwear drawer. It's just, it's over there in the closet. And the closet's designed the right mm -hmm. way that I have all the drawers. I can see my things. It's all there. That's, I mean, and then there's always the television. Well, you have a what do you think about that? See, I'm very anti-television. I know. I'm I very think... anti-television, but then I started, uh, I, I've i started getting into poker. No. Yes. Really? Oh, my God. That's oh, one of girl. like, oh, my God. It is good so much to fun. Know. It is so much fun. Oh, my so, God. And I'm good at it. Like, oh, I won, no. I won $500 no, last, like, last Saturday. I Where? I won $500 at, at the Hollywood Park Casino. <gasps> You're going to yeah. casinos? I know. Oh, oh my God. I love so, that. It's, it's, it's so much fun. I mean, but, you know, it's gambling, so you have to be careful. But I'm yeah. like, so I'm, 
I, at night I'm like literally like watching these poker videos on my iPad. I mean, wow. doing these like poker quizzes online, like, you know, and, and I'm totally getting into it. I'm like, I said to myself, I was anti TV, but I'm in bed watching wow. these poker videos, doing these online poker quizzes. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> quite, no, you know what? The thing is about the television, right? Is that it is an incredibly fantastic tool. I'm sorry. Yeah. And so are video games. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, all of this, video it games are incredible relax. stories. There's relaxing, relax. there's yeah. checking out, there's, yeah. I don't know. I think there's a whole world there. There's so many good programming and it's an it art. Is. You know, the people really, who are creating these stories and the actors and the producers. I think and it's almost one of the highest form of art. I'm telling art you. making there is today. Look at how yeah. transformative documentaries are. No. I mean, or anything. Just to have that, you cannot replace these things if you can't travel especially but you can watch that in the living room or oh yeah the bedroom. But what are your thoughts i mean is i mean there's it's so polarizing i don't know i have to say that i have mauricio has to have a tv in front of him at all times and in our bedroom there is a television and then now we're taking this little break and i have not turned the television on once mm -hmm. and i don't miss it except that it's i also notice how unattractive it is it's a black square mm -hmm. like it's a big rectangle <laughs> of blackness and it's I just kind of look at it like, hmm, like it just seems like a dead zone. It almost seems mm -hmm. like a black hole. You're like, oh, like that could be a really pretty piece of art. And it instantly gives a different vibe. Like just, you can, you can feel me right now. You're walking in a room, the bad dream, like, oh, it's like, oh, black TV. You know, yeah. and it's just, that's all it's doing. It's, you know, begging to get turned on. I know. I, 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 I've been to some But then I, I'm going to give you a break. You live in a smaller house, I'm going to understand. You are given an opportunity to have your TV up in anywhere. But if you're going to create your, when you're ready and you're creating your other environment, you'll decide then. Um, yeah. But it yeah. is a very stat. And also like the electricity that's going through yeah, it. Right? I There's a lot. You know what? Like mm -hmm. I can actually, this is how sensitive I am when I sleep. I can actually, uh, I can feel Wi-Fi. No. I can feel the Wi-Fi rays. Shut the front door. I'm so this is, so that, this is why like having a TV is like. A right. I mean, think about it. It's a yeah, lot. I, I mean, it's a lot that. of energy in that. Yeah, water. there really is. Mm -hmm. You run an office for mm -hmm. all women all women living in a happened. male dominated world mm. of real estate development you should probably meet my girls i love julia oh my god she's something julia's great. julia's special she's because your niece, she's right? my niece and when she came out here i gave her so little i just was mm. so dismissive like oh god there's some girl in here like just some young i just didn't have any patience i thought she'd be really pampered and but she has she's fantastic she's an absolute talent with design um and she's been doing amazing i don't know how she does it it's really she's quite good how do you work as a leader to make sure that you have a really great harmonious work environment i think we'll start with the fact that i used to be a bitch so that's pretty simple because i think i was so stressed out and i didn't know how to do it and i just was going complete bananas honestly i didn't know what I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't ask for it in a way. I just had this guy. We were having fantastic 4 p.m. sex. We were making cute houses. I was just so happy. Like, oh, my God, look at us. We made money. Let's go to Paris. You know, it was this amazing sort of thing. And it turned into, well, the reason you have to use, excuse me, the reason you have to use um, hard money, guys, is because you don't, you're only flipping houses. And by only flipping houses, you're only worth the real estate market, therefore, you have to have a real job, so to speak. So mm -hmm. I had to build the design firm so that I could justify and also live and build to. Which had to make you very exacting. I mean, in order yeah. to build these very expensive homes, you yes. must like, I mean, the clients who are going to buy this, the people who are going to buy this have very high standards. Yes. So you had to have very high standards. Yes. For your and employees. I come from a family of, I don't know, anal people that I just, I can see from an it modus he likes to laugh at me about an eighth of an inch off like i go yeah. like that's crooked and he'll go it's not and he'll measure it and go Fuck. i mean how did you do this like somehow i'm so a particular and i've had to loosen up obviously because mm -hmm. a lot of people are looser when you start getting mm -hmm. i start going to other houses and throughout time working for different people working with with don henley you couldn't make a mistake it was an eighth of an inch off and that was that mm -hmm. period but then as you start going to other people's homes you start to loosen up a little bit and start to pay a little more attention that maybe an eighth of an inch could now be maybe half an inch so to speak you know you give yourself a little more room um but yeah and how do you make sure that your employees just want to work for you because that's something too as a business leader as an owner i mean it's 
It's, um, I think it's motivation and training. It's, I think it's, you're right. And I think it's, it's also listening and honoring people and empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have masterclass, by the way? Mm -hmm. I, I love, love masterclass. Class. Love have, it. have you heard Pharrell yet with his empathy one? I have not. Oh my God, Is this it good one, one, it's fantastic. It so he's empathy? doing a whole thing where he's talking about empathy and what it means. Really? Um, he has different people coming in and talking about it. I think that masterclass is one of the most funnest, fantastic little worlds. Um, anyway, he was talking more about empathy and it made me think more about the office because I have to really look at the eyes of the people, what they want to do. Julia is very young, 22 years old, 23, wherever she is now. And she's really wants to make her mark and she's trying and there's a rebellion in there, right? Because you have to remember who she is. Kim, she's 20 whatever years old. She's still pulling away from her family of which I'm part of in a way. And, you know, and Ram, you start to have a little more compassion. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. She's coming from this. I have Stephanie in my office who's from like kind of um, she's Los Angeles. She's she's Mexican. She's hard. She's fantastic. You know, she's a Dodger fan, like the whole everything. And she has kind of an edge on her um, brought up as a second generation. And, you know, I have to work with that a lot because she comes in as a woman. She's very, very smart. She's a lot of experience. She comes in and she's a little bit got two guns on her where she's already ready, you know, kind of hitting the guys and I have to catch her sometimes mm -hmm. and just go, you know, we're all working together. It's a work family. I mean, it's, yeah. it's really, I mm -hmm. think of it as just, you know, you have a family, it's a different kind of family than your you know, personal family, but it's having, you a see work them family. more. You do. You, you actually, see you, them you, more. you are almost more intimate. Yeah. Them, and so, so under the empathy, the empathy piece becomes huge. Yeah. And I think that when I was sick with the cancer, with, with the cancer, when I was sick with the cancer, I, remembered thinking, I didn't want anyone to know. And I realized, wow, imagine the space they would have given me. Mm -hmm. Just like, oh my God, Kim works so hard. Like right now she's going through something. Let's give her a break. I didn't really ever get, you know, I didn't, I didn't allow anyone to take care of me in a way. And that taught me a lot about where are you coming from with this? Like my son, you, I thought you were mean mommy. Cause I was going through so much stuff and he didn't, I didn't really, if it was in context, he didn't have empathy for me and go, my God, she's going through his medication. It could make her angry, so she's fine. That whole time my son thought I was mean was a time that I could have come to and been like, hey, by the way, this might happen. Mm -hmm. And the same with work, looking at where everyone's, what they're bringing to our party, what they're bringing to each event, and then talking about the clients that we have. And I really integrate them in a, in a really high level. So when I'm going now to meet clients, I have to have somebody come with me so that we can together decide if this is the right client, you know, it's going to move forward with us because I'll just say yes. You know, I'll just be like, oh yeah, I'll do it. You know, I just get really happy and I'm in the moment and kind of like, oh my God, this place looks so cool. But the girls have to come with me and go, mm -hmm. no, Kim, you can't do everything. You've only got so many hours in the yeah. day and they have to rein me in. And then as a boss, I'm at, you're, you're laughing because you could imagine yeah. I give them that much power. I will override if there's a reason or if I'm going into Tatiana, my office, who runs the money, if I go into her and we have to talk about, okay, what's the, what do we have happening, you know, financially, where are we at? And then we can have another decision. And I may have to override, like everyone might go, oh my God, that person might be really difficult to work with or something. I know we have to wrap up. I'm sorry. So, I talked so much. So, well, this is, I, could you get all your stuff for, I could talk to you I'll for so back. we can, we can totally sorry, do another today. one. Okay, we will great. do another one, but right, let's, right. let's, let's just end with a few quick rapid fire questions that oh, I oh. ask you. All right. I'm scared. You got to look on your face. And I'm scared now. <laughs> All right, go ahead. What are your top three healthiest habits? Healthiest habits. Healthiest habits. Getting up in the morning and immediately getting outside. Mm -hmm. That is number one. I can't, I think that you get up and you get out, I think is number one. Um, going for a walk or getting outside somehow in the middle of the day. Like whether now we have our office over on Montana and it's been a miracle because you have to stop. You're in the middle of everything and you go, wait, wait, no. I go, go get a cup of anything. Just get out. Mm -hmm. And you just, you know, popping in a window. Um, and the other thing I think that's really healthy is walking more where you live. Mm -hmm. So you can see little shops and you see neighbors, little neighbors yeah. and just connect with that. I so if that, that, does that answer? Yes. Oh, good. So I have a principle that says uh, that part of balance is having healthy vices. Mm -hmm. Tell you me. mean like the 4 p.m. sex? What's a vice? A I mean, vice I don't know. What's is, a vice? What is a vice? Like for me, I think poker is a vice. It's gambling. You think? I think so. You know, but it's a food is a vice. Oh yeah. I like, I like, I mean, I love like late nights. Like I'm a, I'm a night owl. I like mm. nightlife. Mm. Um, 
but then by you know like a nightlife i like to stay out late and right then i you know i i then wake up late and you can't always do that so mm-hmm. but i also think those those vices bring me great joy yes so right it's all about food and balance, balance. and you so, know i so was out with is... some people i was out with some people the other day and she said you know i'm a vegetarian so i was like okay so when the i so it was fine. So we ordered some food and she asked about one of the vegetables and they said, um, oh, well, there's fish sauce on there. So she said, okay, I won't have that. Can they remove the fish sauce? And I'm thinking, where do you draw the line? Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just yeah. thinking to yourself, okay, it's fish sauce. I get it. She's like, and I go, well, it's just fish sauce. And she goes, I'm a vegetarian. And I'm thinking, okay, girl, like just, mm-hmm. you know, it's, and I have a funny name for some people, some friends about a vegetarian. I'm like, wait, are they bacon vegetarians? <laughs> You know what I mean? Because then there's the bacon vegetarians that have to have a little bit of bacon because you can't say no to bacon. So, you know what I mean? And it's a funny thing, but I feel like that's kind of, you know, if you're doing it because of some health thing, I don't really don't think that your body isn't going to be really rebellious. It's just balance. Well, I think it's what is I think everyone should have something that brings them great joy like yeah. a vice that mm-hmm. brings them great joy but maybe you don't do it all the time but you do it right. occasionally i mean i'm guessing masturbating right that's a good one is that a vice <laughs> is that? that a vice no i think it's an exercise that is, that is... i think it's like going to the gym i don't know but i'm just saying like a little private time private maybe time. what else would be a vice i don't know i guess it's in the food drink family okay i think for that's me. good i think food yeah and drink believe me i love what, food. buying you know buying retail buying therapy. stuff retail, retail therapy. therapy is a vice that's okay. a vice that's a vice but that brings you great joy yeah so that is that uh-huh. is a good one what does wealth mean to you There's something, I'm, I wasn't expecting this. I guess, oh my God, those shoes are so cute. It's made of wealth. Look at those shoes. I didn't even notice that. Are those feathers? I got those, I got those in Mykonos. Oh my God, they're fantastic. <laughs> God, girl. Okay, sorry. Um, okay. Wealth. You hear the word. I, I think it's about being, I just don't know if it's a destination. There's something about wealth in that you're giving, that you're, comfortable enough in any situation that you're not addicted to the outcome does that make sense Mm -hmm. like what you're full of it you're full you're full enough your wealth you're full and you don't have to stress too much about what that number is in the bank where your relationship is going to fall right then Um, a lot of things there's something about that i don't know yeah full i think it's about being full Mm -hmm. or satisfied maybe like where you're not chasing anything yeah content Mm mm-hmm it's maybe ignorant of me not to add it to money, but I think that's what I'm trying to, is I'm not actually looking at wealth as being money. I mean, I could easily say it means that I can buy a house. You know, if I can buy a house right now, it'd be amazing. Like I, I've been addicted to this idea of trying to find a way in my office to be able to get companies or something, help people put the down payment on houses and then have them pay the mortgage. Because I feel like the work that I'm doing, not just, creatively, but just this idea of home. So many people should own a home and really have it decorated and be the way that they want it to be while they still go out and make money for our country. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like make money. Like they're yeah. out there, like going to the restaurants and keeping the system going and, you know, just celebrating small business and going into little places and buying cool clothes and getting out there and doing it. But while these people are, while these kids are doing it, still making a hundred thousand dollars a year, um, hundred something. They can't live in the west side of Los Angeles. It's they hard. cannot buy a house, and the rents are so high that there's no way that they could pay that rent, plus put away money to put a down payment, plus go shopping and buy cute stuff and have a full life. I think that that I'm really interested in my as my world keeps going. So in relation to wealth, is me able to when you're comfortable in a certain place, where do your values fall? This is in my wheelhouse about about real estate really right and about homes what is my big thing right now there's a lot happening with homeless and it's such a quagmire i can't even i've tried so hard to figure that out and that's just a mess and i keep looking at people like my office that are making x that just cannot there's no way they're gonna they'll, how long is it going to take for someone to put together 150 200,000 20 percent down on these houses it's hard i mean it, it goes i mean money is important but also there's so many other things other than money which are just as important as yes well. mm-hmm. and that's where the balance of all of this yeah totally comes in. yeah my final question okay what is an important life lesson or insight that you have learned that has brought you the most amount of balance in your life
I guess it, it is the cancer. For me, it was using something that was negative to shake or, or could perceive to be negative to be able to shake it up and go, wow, I don't have enough balance in my life. Like some kind of a wake up. For me, I needed someone to hit me with a baseball bat. And maybe you don't have to. Maybe you're looking at it going, what is balance to me? And this is where meditation comes from or creative visualizations. I sit in the house and think about whatever this house wants to become a castle. And you can sit there in your house and just close your eyes and just say, hmm, what is balance for me exactly? What does balance for me look like? And how can I get it? What would make me feel good? And maybe you start to work on it. I think it has to be a destination or not a destination, but a goal. It's a goal, mm -hmm. right? It's like part of your, your to-do it list. It's, a, it's something you do every day. Yeah, you walk, it's go some, for a walk. Yeah. Fuck your man at four o'clock, four o'clock. And the <laughs> four o'clock. <laughs> To four o'clock. Four o'clock. Kim, I love you. Four o'clock. Yeah, so four o'clock. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Oh my God. Oh, that is bring balance though. Yeah. It does. On, on it top does of it, bring yeah. us balance. Well, it's also talking about like what brings me balance. Okay, I need to have my man and I have to be regulated and have a sexually mm -hmm. happy time, you know, mm -hmm. or I'm feeling a lot of stress. I'm feeling too much decisions and i need that i need to find that balance what mm -hmm. how do i get that oh i get that by having sex at four o'clock or whatever i mean or it might be i need to have a salad at two i don't know yeah. like you have to think about it. it's so individualistic yeah. i guess so for me it was i had no idea someone hit me in the head with a rock and just was like stop and i went oh whoa and then realized i have to figure this out is there anything else you want to leave our viewers with you look cute in the dress thank you <laughs> I told, I told him all that when you, you walked did. out. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank this has been so much. so much fun. Invite me anytime. Thank you so much. Where can our viewers and our listeners find you on social media? In the Kim Gordon Designs realms. Okay. Julia does that, by the way. You'll have to be like, hey. So on Instagram. Kim yeah, Gordon all that Designs. Kim Gordon Designs. Yeah, okay. totally. Thank you. Sounds good. Well, Kim, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Raquel. And to my darling viewers and listeners, thank you for sharing your time with me today. Goodbye, Until my love. Until next time. <laughs>